What's up, Minnesota Dirt? It is Labor Day. So happy Labor Day to you guys. We're at Speed Shop. Me, Paris, Harper, and uh, we're actually gonna do something else besides for racing. We are gonna work on some tree stands because the 19th is bow opener. So we're gonna get that taken care of. But Billy right now, um, he's tearing his car apart because he took a pretty good hit. And his car is gonna have to go on the jig. So, see it all straightened back out. Looking good. Animal show his love to it. What's taking so long, Billy? Huh? Take the whole body off. Takes time to get the body off. Mmm. Finally, ever get surprises? No. It's kind of a good opportunity, though. Two to what? Oh. Go through everything? Yeah. I'll probably take all the rotors and stuff, go through the bearings, and I'll probably take the sliders to work and go through those. And the jam range should be ready to rock, man. So you're pretty much, you're, uh, I suppose you're, you're done until uh, the jamboree. Well, no. Bobby Gullickson's picking up his dirt newer Thursday. And I bet if I ask Bob to race it at Lansing, he'd probably be way okay with that. I didn't know that Bobby got a dirt dealer. Yeah, he picks it up Thursday. Is this a brand new dirt dealer? Or is... uh, it's a 2010 with 20 updates. Um, pretty similar to mine, but his is under slung. But swing arm car. And I asked Bob what the springs were in already, and they were pretty much the same thing that I was running when I was. Uh, Where did you get this car from? Some dude from Eau Claire. Got a pretty good deal on it. I guess the car's got like 39, 39th on it. Adam knew all about it, obviously. Your header don't look that bad. No, header's untouched. Should have been here for the smoke show. Smoke show is that? When I poured about a half quart of train fluid on the carburetor. She was smoking pretty good. We killed some mosquitoes. So that's it for the crate. She's uh, she's gonna go into hibernation. Yeah. Cool, cool.
Minnesota dirt. Alrighty, we have the 83 machine all tore down, ready to go back to dirt dueler. I'm still learning how to do this stuff, so is Charlie. Um, as we were doing the whole time lapse thing of tearing down the car, I didn't check to make sure the GoPro was still on. The battery died, so y'all missed the, the little ending of it. I believe y'all saw us remove the carburetor, my whole little mess with the whole trying to get the fuel out of the car, but we got the car officially stripped down. Everything's out of it. So we also we didn't do a really good recap or closing video at Deer Creek. What happened was we were pretty deep in the field. We were taking the green flag and a car broke about mid-pack and they went to the middle of the track so that there was a clear lane in the bottom and the top for them, uh, for the cars to go through. Well, taking the green flag, last thing you expect is half the field to be piled up stopped in the front stretch so between the dust next you know i come down the front stretch all i see is stop cars i locked them up slid the car sideways and we tagged them with the passenger door um as you see bent these bars all up bent this bar luckily that bar saved the header and kept it from getting the motor knocked all the whole crash rail off the right side bent this bar all up um I probably wouldn't have gotten this fixed until the end of the season, but with this being the mid plate bar, you can see it's all cracked and broke out there. Um, let's see if I can get a good view. It's all broken up there. This bar is all broken up down there. And that's one of my main support bars for the hoop in case if I rolled this thing. So now we have safety involved here. The motor, which is probably one of the most expensive parts of the car, can you know it might not be perfectly aligned or god forbid this bar breaks out and something happened with that it could be very very expensive very very unsafe so we decided to make the executive decision and we called dirt dealer and said hey man please put us down on the for a doctor's appointment and uh yeah so it's going to go in for some surgery this week so i don't know if, i think it's been mentioned in previous videos before but saturday was the last run on the crate motor we have the new open motor back. Probably be picking that up tomorrow or Wednesday. And then we'll get the accessories all taken off, pull the distributor, get that all swapped over to the open motor again, which I'm super, super excited for. Um, the Jambri is USRA. And there's a lot of guys with a lot of big horsepower there. Um, the track's more likely it's gonna be super, super tacky just because it's a big event. A lot of fans, a lot of drivers. Deer Creek's gonna wanna put on a great show. And that crate motor just doesn't have enough oomph um, when it's super, super tacky. When it's dry slick, you know, it's enough to be dangerous. But when it's, uh, when it's heavy and it's uh, up on the top, you want all the horses you can get. And that open motor is going to have a lot more than that. And it's going to be awesome to smell corn again in the shop. I'm not a big fan of gas. It doesn't smell very good to me. But that smell of corn, got to love it for the farmers. So, yeah, that pretty much wraps it up. Here's the rear end assembly. I don't know if you guys have really been underneath my car to see everything that I run. Um, suspension cages, where's machine? Good old WM400 4QA. I don't know what you guys run in your cars, but if you're looking for one place to upgrade and you're not running Weir's cages, I highly recommend it. Beginning of the season, uh, we slapped the wall pretty good, snapped a J-bar, and the bar bent the bent the plates. Most people's uh, suspension cages, I would have had to cut off my brake bracket, take the whole hub off, slide this whole cage off. You know, that would have been about two or three hours worth of work. These cages, takes about 10 minutes. Zip off these three bolts, and this whole plate drops. Those three bolts, that whole plate drops. 15 minutes I had this cage back to 100% brand new again. Very convenient, especially if something like that would happen in between a heat and feature. When you don't have a lot of time to be doing heavy, heavy repairs, so convenient. But yeah, beautiful cage. Also, it's really nice is these, the quick adjust. You just take this bolt loose, you pop these pucks to the side, and you can raise and lower your bars. Um, very, very convenient. Mine and Charlie's car, we have these WM450s, left and rights. 
essentially it's a extended jam nut so it just takes it just replaces your standard jam nut and it's threaded through here and this is just a sleeve and then puts the hex out here so it gets your jam nut out of your four bars out of in between the cage and very very easy to lock your bars back up after you do like a trail adjustment or uh, a steer adjustment since I got it out, I'll take, I'll get this all fixed up. That was one of the things we bent when we hit the wall beginning of the year. Um, but rather than that, rear end's ready to rock. Nice pen rear end. It's brand new at the beginning of the season. Man, this thing looks weird with American Racers on it. I'm still not used to that. I'm used to seeing the big old Hoosiers. So all right, Minnesota Dirt, that should wrap it up. As always, like us on Facebook, like us on Instagram, like and share on YouTube. Tell your friends about us. We really, really appreciate you guys. Um, we've, seen a, we've seen our subscribers go up quite a bit, and that's all because of you guys liking and sharing and telling your friends about us. Uh, big shout out to my good buddy Chase Holland. He got a win again this weekend. He's been on a roll this year, and uh, it doesn't look like he's going to be slowing that roll down anytime soon. So good job, Chase. Uh, look forward to seeing you at the Jamboree. So as always, thanks Minnesota Dirt. We'll see you at the track.